so far it has been all SIU, but oh, there's a lifetime to go in this one. We're going to send it back to Bristol and we'll come right back. Let's go to John Saunders in the studio. All right, Doug. Well, John's under the weather. Mike Tirico here, but John's watching at home and uh, he wants to see the end of the St. Peter's Manhattan game. Let's take him there. Back to Dave Sims. Thank you, Mike. This has been a beauty. Everybody see it. And here's Fred Frischella dialing up the final play with a moment. The wig. Oh, what boxing. A big time play, Dave. He wanted it in his hands. And this is against a taller, terrific defender to knock down. Oh, onions. And right now extending the floor defensively. And he shot it over you know, a guy, six foot two, Frenzley's 5'10". And, and now Ted Fiore with the timeout as he sees exactly the deployment of Manhattan. You don't want to give up the long one. That's the key thing Teddy will be drumming into his players. St. Peter's wins this game. If they do, this kid has a chance to be a cult hero next week, first round NCAA tournament. He's going to change the style in Jersey City. That's right. A little late for us to be wearing ponytails, Raph. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? But right now, when you, when you think of Fran Fraschilla, his options are He's got to get it to half court and then look under. There's plenty of time with four and a clock. All right, back to Mike Tirico. Here's JP. Here's... All right, Dave, let's not waste any time. We know some of you folks are really hoping to see this MVC game, so let's get it right back out for another minute or so. Doug and Reggie. Welcome back to St. Louis. Tulsa still looking to catch up with the Salukis. They fell 6-2. That was a nice pass by Poindexter looking down for good initiation down low. Johnson, Kwanzaa Johnson just taking the ball and going up with the first thrust and then the second thrust for the free throws. Very explosive athlete. Nice crowd on hand. Southern Illinois with a large throng of people. It's about an hour and a half from Carbondale, Illinois to St. Louis. So many of their fans made the trek over. Let's go back to Mike Tirico in the studio in Bristol, Connecticut. All right, Southern Illinois is the three seed, Tulsa is the one. The finish of the MAC, maybe, Dave Sims. Thank you, Mike, and here we go. Final 4.2. Hyman lost control. Double dribble. Double dribble. That time Manhattan was caught. One second left. And Mike Frensley, ladies and gentlemen, has been the man for St. Peter's. 19 points, three assists, no turnovers. And he has really been marvelous tonight. There's Frensley. He's got it. Chip week here in the month of March. It, it, hey, it never comes down to the last day. It's the whole game. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we have tonight. And Manhattan now one for three in four straight trips to the Metro Atlantic final. St. Peter's now 20 and 10. In the 94-95 season, Manhattan drops to 25 and 4. For Bill Raftery, I'm Dave Sims. Hope you enjoyed it. Now let's to get to the Missouri Valley Championship. Doug Bell and Reggie Theus. Gentlemen, hit that shot, but he's in a rut right now. And congratulations to St. Peter's. Winner of the Metro Atlantic Tournament. This is the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament at the Keel Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Chris Carr has taken over. Car the moment. Well, Chris Carr has the opportunity to, to really score well in this game. He owes Kwanzaa Johnson something, too, because last time they played each other in January, Kwanzaa got the best of it. SIU has won this tournament two years in a row, and Jay Seals is the man for Tulsa. He answers. 11-9 Saluki. Tulsa changing their defense about three times already in this early part of the game. Full court press, three-quarter court press, and now really just stepping out defensively to try to get SIU out of their offense. During the regular season, Tulsa wins on a last-second tip-in at the buzzer. Southern wins on a last-second shot at home. Chris Marr lays it in. Well, that's a tough play because he's got to have backline help. Anytime you front, you have to have backline help. Williams. 
Jackson. Red ball, Ed Hightower says. And he means SIU. We'll take a break. Saluki's 13, Hurricane 9. We'll come back to St. Louis right after this. It's one of the best basketball arenas in the country, the Keel Center in St. Louis, Missouri. And let's look at the starting lineups now, or at least the people that are on the court for SIU. Lusk, Hawkins, Timmons, Carr, and Stewart. And for Tulsa, Seals, Williamson, Johnson, Poindexter, Maldonado. Seals and Williamson, the first team Missouri Valley Conference backcourt. So they are a very, very talented tandem. Timmons bringing it into the Slukies are off to a very fast start. And Chris Carr taking it to the hole. Boy, he feels it right now. Well, he's a rhythm player. Right now, he is in his own dance. Chris Carr, the Valley Player of the Year. And before the game, he kind of hooked up with my partner, Reggie Theus, and they were talking things over. Maldonado laying it in. They were talking about the future, weren't you? We were talking about what it was going to take for him to go to the next level. And one of the things we we're talking about is six foot six, trying to play small forward and, and two guard. He's going to have to get on the weights. Marcus Timmons. The other talented player in this game goes to Shane Hawkins. Maybe a pass in for Carr, but nevertheless, it counts to the Salukis. The Salukis right now really moving the ball well, moving without the ball, doing just about everything they want right. One Dexter. And a foul on Hawkins. Didn't believe it. Poindexter is one of those kind of players that really is tough underneath. Uh, with his, his, other, his other big guy, Maldonado, is always in the right place at the right time. Poindexter with the long arms and a little block there, but his buddy, Raphael, right there to pick up the slack and get the foul. Tulsa is a very quick team, and they are very big. Maldonado, 6'11", 265. Poindexter, 6'11", 230. Legitimate, folks. They are big fellas. Seals from way downtown. But I think it's going to be really important. And the block inside. Back to Seals, who's strong underneath, but he misses. Poindexter. That's just great hustle underneath. Maldonado. That's just great hustle underneath, Doug. All players, all four players of Tulsa's team crashing the boards. It's important for Seals to get in this game early. And I know for sure the one way for him to get involved in this game is to go to the bucket. Kwan's on the on the follow-up, gets a block, but there's Maldonado, there's Seals, Poindexter. Look at all of them. They're just battling underneath there. <laughs> they take up a lot of space, very active. Poindexter a junior, Maldonado a sophomore, so Tubby Smith has some large talent returning next season. And both these big guys have a nice touch from about 12 to 15 feet. So if you see him shooting that 12 or 15 footer, that's not unusual. Tubby wants them to do that. And they have two big hosses ready to come in to replace him, too. We'll talk about later. Oh, yeah. They don't lose anything when they go to their bench. They may, they may even gain a couple of pounds. And Maldonado shoots one more. There was a lane violation whistle. Now you got Tucker and Seals over there battling for position, knocking, trying to knock each other off the block. So Maldonado makes uh, the best of it with a second chance opportunity. 17-13. Tulsa back into the three-quarter court press defense, a 1-2-2-1. One, two, two, one. Horatio Tucker and Chris Carr. Here comes the Golden Hurricane. Inside look. And the foul, Scott Berzinski picks it up. There's Scott. Nice look in. Kwanzaa Johnson is only about six foot four, but he plays like he's about six foot eight. He's always in the paint, and he can get his shot off on the biggest of players. Good look at Kwanzaa, a junior out of Oklahoma City. He's only a 65% free throw shooter, but his, his biggest asset is that he's one of those kind of players that keeps the ball alive on the board. Even if he can't get the rebound, he has a great knack 
of getting his hands on it and getting it back on the board. In the ball game now, here's another one of the big guys off the bench, J.R. Rallo, 6'10", 260, replacing Maldonado. And Craig Hernady also in, Hernady, 6'7", 235. I told you they gained a little weight when they, <laughs> when they went to their bench a little bit. A lot of tight end prospects on this Tulsa roster. They all move very well. Timmons with the basketball, a young man from Haywood City, Missouri, population 400. We'll talk more about that later. Terrific story. Blue Williamson. Nice seal off. Very nice play. Rollo held his man off very nice with the left arm and his hip, but Seal's making a very easy pass, soft pass to the big fella. So all they have to do is catch it and put it right up to the bucket. That's what they were working on in practice this morning. An inside lob pass, big man to big man. Horatio Tucker. Berzinski, too strong. We're all tied up now after an early, early flurry by SIU. Also settled in. won this tournament two years in a row. Tulsa's won the regular season title two years in a row. Williamson. Nice play by Williamson. Then, you know what's great about him is you really have to pay attention to him because when he's on the break or with the ball, he's a triple threat. But he's not a guy that you can lay off of because as you can see, he can hit the jumper. Say Tulsa's already in the big dance, regardless what happens tonight. They're not taking any chances. And the foul. Chris Carl shoot two, and J.R. Rollo out of ball in Missouri. Doesn't believe it, neither does Tubby Smith, head coach of the Golden Hurricane. Car on the ISO, he's really being very offensive minded right now. He's got a great ability to use his left hand. He's almost ambidextrous, but absolutely can shoot the ball falling away, can shoot the ball leading to the basket, shoot with his right hand and his left hand. Just tremendous athlete. He's also from a city that has about 450 yeah. people. Pilot Knob, Missouri. <laughs> Marcus Timmons from Haywood City, Missouri. Chris Carr from Pilot Knob, both with about 400 or so people in the town. <laughs> and they're the two best players of this squad. Interesting that Rich Heron finds them both in the small towns. Of course, the whole team's made up of small town kids. Well, you talk about who Williamson is from Bags, Oklahoma, and there he's from a city with about 1,500. He said that was one of the things that really motivated him is that people kept saying that he was playing against nobody. So when he got to college, it was a great chance for him to show what he could do. And he is somebody. As you saw moments ago, Tulsa on top, 2018. It's Arch Madness in St. Louis, where Tulsa leads Southern Illinois 20 to 18. Doug Bell alongside Reggie Theus. Let's look at some game notes now. As we told you, SIU's won this the last couple of years. Paul Lusk red hot in the tournament so far. And Cordell Love not bad himself. But Lusk, an interesting story because you were in the press conference the other day. Well, you know, for the season, he's only shooting 37%. And at the press conference on Saturday, he was asked about his season-long slump. It really must have ticked him off because for the last two games, he's shooting 65% from the field. And last night, three huge baskets to put them into the league for good against uh, Illinois State. SIU knocked off ISU, Illinois State in the semifinals. Tulsa knocked off a pesky bunch from Bradley. And Chris Carr. This is where Chris Carr is most effective, coming down. Because what he does, just like that, he draws so much attention to himself with the help defense. Guys like Lusk and, and uh, Timmons are wide open for shots, just like that. That was your man, Paul Lusk. And with that bucket, he reaches 1,000 points this season. SIU has three players now over 1,000 points, Timmons, Carr, and Mr. Lusk. Comes 
SIU. Horatio Tucker. Tucker not known for his offense or for his defense. Rich Heron felt that he had to play a lot tonight to match up with the quickness of Tulsa. But Heron is real happy with him because he has picked his game up in the last month. And he said also that if you want a guy to pick it up, it's the last month of the season that you really need him to do it. Ian Stewart has misfired twice now, and he seems a bit frustrated. He's had some problems getting inside that cylinder. And the whistle. Offensive foul. Williamson. That's very good defense by Tucker and his boys because Poole Poo Williamson is definitely a threat going to the bucket. He's got a lot of moves. Look at the crossover, the stop, and then the elevation to the basket. But Tucker planted his body and held fast to take that charge. Really nice position defensively. Poo Williamson doesn't believe it. Some say Poo Williamson is the quickest player in the country. You know, he's a very underrated player. We both know that he's taken it to players like Tyus Sedney and uh, Brooks from Oklahoma State. 20 points against both players. All up. There's your man. Five points for Paul last two times down. Williamson is quick. Of course, there's a kid at Arizona, Stottlemyre, who's pretty quick, too. Bradley could not handle Blue Williamson in the semifinal. They had nobody could match up with him. Very nice pass. Love just a sweet pass. You know, what, what's nice about that is he skipped it along the baseline. If you saw, it never came up above Maldonado's knees. Marcus Timmons. And he dribbles up high like that. It pulls one of the big fellas out. Point that there and Locke continues to be just red off. Lush is deadly from 15 to 17 foot range. And he's got a nice shot. When he elevates, he sort of leans to his left a lot like Norm Nixon used to do. It's a tough, tough play to guard. Oh, good dish from Aldonado who has trouble handling it, but he battles inside, keeping it alive. And the big guy gets fouled from behind. Well, I tell you what, right now, Tulsa is really doing a great job on the offensive boards. Almost every time down court, if there's penetration, there is an offensive rebound and a possible putback. Love on a nice little dish. Maldonado can't handle it at first, but look at him fighting for the ball. Puts it up on the glass and doesn't let it go, just stays with it and has a second chance. That's why he's up there shooting free throws right now. Ian Stewart leaves with two fouls. He's replaced by Jamie Beach and Shea Seals back in for the Golden Hurricane. When you're playing against a, a player as big as Poindexter and Raphael, you have to first, before you do anything else, as you're looking at Tubby, put a body on him. You have to ride him out of the lane because he's tall and he's got long arms. He doesn't have to jump very high. Timmons pulls it down again. He leads SIU in rebounding. to Chris Carr with those long arms. A hold on 50 White right here. And you heard it, Rafael Maldonado, number 50 with a hold. That's a tough play for Kwanzaa because once, once Carr gets down below the 15-foot mark, his, his other teammates have to be very aware of him driving to the basket. That time, on the drive, Poindexter didn't step out and give help for Kwanzaa. Chris Carr off the inbounds play. That's how you draw it up on the chalkboard. That worked great. SIU is now pushed out to a four-point lead. And it's still Horatio Tucker. Squirts out. And lays it in. Six-point cushion for the Saluki. Lots of people have come over from Carbondale, Illinois. It is not a long drive. Smith said he felt this was a road game, even though his team is the top seed in the home uniform. SIU basketball, you can hear the crowd. Lots of folks from SIU are here. They are into it, folks. Tubby Smith. Nice visit with 
Chubby Smith before the game. He's a very frank talker. Trying to help me with my game a little bit. <laughs> what a guy to play for. Reggie Theus needs no help with his game. <laughs> He's still shooting the eyes out before the game out here with a camera crew. <laughs> Taking their lunch money. That's right. I'm winning my lunch money. basketball that's an interesting play because back in the old days there was a play called a force out they took that out of the rule yeah. that right there is a tough play to call because there's really not much contact but there's no such thing as a player being forced out of bounds. he has to even be called for traveling or foul and the referee's got to call foul in pickup games they still have force out yeah you can force a guy out because <laughs> because if you called that on me i wouldn't give up the ball <laughs> Johnson connects on the first. If you look at Rich Heron, 802 career wins when you combine what he's done at SIU and at Benton High School, where he's a Hall of Fame high school coach in the state of Illinois. Doug Collins, the best player that ever suited up for him at Benton High School. 29-25, SIU over Tulsa. Welcome back to the Keel Center in St. Louis, Missouri, where the Salukis are on top of the Golden Hurricane. You see all the banners up at the top of the rafters for the St. Louis Blues. This is their home arena as well. The St. Louis Billikens play here, and it's the home of the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. You see Chubby Smith, 17 kids in his family. He has 12 sisters and five brothers. I, I tell you what, you have to fight for a meal in that, in that family. If you're late to, to dinner, you can forget it. <laughs> SIU, 63%. Tubby got his nickname because they said as a kid, he liked to spend a lot of time in the tub. <laughs> I guess with all those brothers and sisters, when you got in the tub, you might as well stay there for a while. You weren't going to get it. He's probably looking for a place to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he was a delight, Tubby Smith. So is Rich Heron, both coaches. Fun to talk to. But right now, the story of the game is SIU has scored nine points off of Tulsa's turnovers. Second chance points, Tulsa has five second chance points. Points in the paint, Tulsa's eight, SIU 10. All lost, sets it up, holds up three fingers. They're trying to get him open, Maldonado coming out. shot clock runs out. That's very nice defense. If you saw up top when Raphael stepped out and stopped that pass from coming back to the top of the key, that was a turning point in that series of defense. That made the offense have to go back to the other side, and they weren't prepared for that. Johnson holding the ball above his head, and Jay Seal. shot clock. And the lob to Maldonado. He just misses. Seals. It looked like it might have gone off Seals, but Timmons got in there, so Tulsa keeps it. Well, you take a look. Raphael is going to hold the offense defensive player off well, but the problem is on the weak side, Lux was a little bit late coming over for help. If you're going to front the defensive player, offensive player, then you have to have the offside defense ready to rotate over. Why not? Three point range. Wanza Johnson. Point for Kwanzaa. Tubby Smith said he's impressed with the leadership that he's got from Johnson in the last few weeks of this season. He's come up big for the Golden Hurricane. Coming in at about 18 on the computer. Kwanzaa is their best defensive player. In January, he put a stop to Carr when they played him up there. Lost from way out. That was NBA range. Beyond the NBA strike. Jay Seals comes up long. And both teams misfiring right now. Jamie Beach. No, that's for 
Brzezinski. Brzezinski's now in for SIU. He's another bruiser. Score right around the bucket, but Brzezinski can step out and hit the 16-footer if he has to. those short shots to fall and now he picks up the silly foul he's really getting ample opportunity down there to take over this basketball game but he's just not converting if you're going to go for it if you're going to get it to him down there he's going to have to convert good body position and look at his long arms but he's just not extending all the way if you saw him on that shot he didn't extend his arms all the way look at he's kind of like a short arm shot he's got to go ahead and extend that arm and lean into the defense and then, of course, after the play, don't turn around and make a silly foul. <laughs> Shane Hawkins with a basketball. Check back in for SIU. And Brzezinski. Handled inside. Bangin gets it right back. Here comes Tulsa. This is when Tulsa is really tough just because Ooh, of that man right there. And a block, Marcus Timmons. Oh, don't do that. No free cheese here. Shane Hawkins. Blocks with a follow. Oh. Just great end-to-end -end basketball. Great defense on one end and the putback by Luss on the other end. SIU really playing good basketball. This is just like a home game for the Salukis. Three quarters of the court is all maroon. Now you hear the chant, SIU, SIU. And really, tempo-wise, this is SIU's tempo. Oh! And I tell you what, if Tulsa could convert some of that in-the-paint stuff, they would be, it would be a different score right now. We're having fun in St. Louis, and so are the Salukis, up by five. This is what makes Poo Williamson so tough on the break. Look at him. Work, 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 work. Timmons on the block. Get it out of here. <laughs> SIU on the run now. You got Hawkins coming in for the layup. And look where the workhorse is. Lust. Where you always need him. Marcus Timmons, the defensive player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference. A young man who's getting some looks from NBA scouts. And you know, they really should because he's a guy that, that uh, uh, Rich Heron really loves this guy. He says he's the best athlete he's had in 10 years. Not because he's scoring and, his, and everything else, it's because the intangibles, his leadership, his defense, his unselfishness. And the whistle. now. 3.21 on the clock. Saluki's up by five. See Ed Hightower. Big time official working this game. Along with Eric Harmon and Ron Zetcher. Lusk continues to be the main man for SIU. Now, Lus is only about a 65% free throw, 68% free throw shooter. But you know what makes him so tough is he's got experience, and you won't find a steadier player. Nothing flashy, just work, and the right type of work, not false work. There's a big difference. Some guys look like they're working hard. <laughs> he looks like he's working hard, and he is working hard. A seal. Look at the explosion. Some real quick feet. From a standing still start, he goes stutter step and goes left. That's not easy to do, Doug. He really passed up a shot. He had an open shot. Well, that, shot. one of the reasons why he passed open that open shot is because he hasn't really hit any shots yet. Right there, he could have taken Stewart to the hole and done something with it. But look, he looks for his open people. The smart thing that he did last night when he came out of the game and he didn't play in the first half is he didn't come back into the game. As you look at Shane Hawkins, he didn't come back into the game 
and try to take over, try to get back the points that he didn't get in the first half. He used his head, the team was playing well, and he let the, he stayed in the flow and let the guys keep on playing as well as they were playing. J.R. Rallo connects in the first. Kwanzaa Johnson back in now for Tulsa. You know, J.R. is a big fisherman, loves to fish. Big mouth <laughs> bass. And this morning, Reggie, you were pulling his light. You were telling a fishtail, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was telling a big... He wants to catch a record book big mouth bass. And I was telling him that I caught a big mouth bass. He didn't know I was reading his bio. That I caught a big mouth bass as big as his leg. He was going, really? How, how much where? Way, where? And I go, yeah, right. You'd like to know, wouldn't you? <laughs> J.R. misses that. Reggie has really had a lot of fun with these kids. Today at the shoot-around, they were all coming over. Oh, yeah. Getting advice, getting autographs. <laughs> <laughs> On the balance side. On Juan to Johnson. Well, that's another smart play by Lust. Going to the bucket and finding Timmons, stepping inside. Timmons not using any other fakes, but straight up underneath the defense, drawing the contact. Real nice play. We saw Craig Hernady checking in now for Tulsa. You know, Tulsa's team is full of crazy type of, you know, their one-time thing that they love to do. Hernady's, you know what his is? He wants to go skydiving. <laughs> Coming up next, 8-10 semifinal. Who's going to be in the NCAA and more? That's at halftime. I'm a daring guy, but he can have that one. Music. Boy, our microphone is right up there by the net. Oh, it sounds, sounds great, doesn't so it? so nice. Gives me chill bumps every time I hear that net pop like that. Oh, yeah. There you go. And a body block. Oh, come on now. Cordell Love. You know, it always irritates me when the referee has to call a foul just because there was contact. Carr sets a real nice pick. A real hard pick. A guy who I remember used to set picks like that used to kill me. Whereas Rick Mahorn at the key like that. But, you know, if a guy's going to set a pick like that, you have to allow for the contact. That's called, what is that, an off-the-ball offensive charge? <laughs> what do you do? I tell you what you do. You yell at your teammate. Because if I'm loved and my man allowed me to run into a pick like that, I would be chewing him out right now. He should be all over Kwanzaa Johnson for not telling him that Carl was sitting there at half court getting ready to clean his clock. Our connects on the first. We mentioned earlier from Pilot Knob, Mizzou, a small <laughs> town. Now, I know you're from a small town, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm from Inglewood, California. That, you know. Inglewood? Yeah. Isn't you know. that like right next to Los Angeles? <laughs> How small could it be? <laughs> Inglewood's small. L.A. is very big. <laughs> Come on. Inglewood and Pilot Knob, a little difference there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Closing in on the two-minute mark. Already closed by Horatio Tucker. Those big fellas love to set those high screens and then let Poo maneuver. Well, the difference right now in the game is the fact that Poo hasn't been able to get in the flow of the game. And the offensive foul. Another great play by the defensive player of the year, Timmons coming over after the play has already been made. Watch this play. Timmons in the back line looking at him taking the punishment. And that hurt because uh, two games ago, he got hit very hard in the lower area of the middle. And last night, he got hit in the same place. And he was a little slow getting up. I wonder if he got hit again. Kevin Grauer now has checked in for Tulsa. Tulsa still trying to change the defense up, trying to get SIU in even a more up-tempo basketball game because that's where Poole Williamson is more effective. There's Timmons, blocked from behind by Seals. Solid rebound and a nice block. Lust. 
Well, he forced a shot that time. Well, it's the basketball. But the nice thing about it was two things. One, he knows that he has a height advantage on Gower. And after the shot was taken, he looks over at Rich Heron and says, Coach, my fault. So he knows that that's not really in their game plan. And I bet you don't see that again. Unless it's a post-up situation. He is taller than Grower. And the pass inside. Just a superb oh, move. Wouldn't go down. And again, Tulsa having problems converting on the in the paint buckets. Poindexter, nice pass for a guy six foot ten. Really timed it perfectly on the back door. Watch this. This is all timing. This is something you have to work on in practice constantly. And look at the skip pass down the middle of the lane through the defense, but can't convert. Tulsa's going to be in this ball game. They got to finish those up. Shea gets the first. And it's important for Shea to get on the board right now because he hasn't hit from the outside. So he's got to start getting to the bucket and so he can get some free throws so he, don't, so he doesn't have to chase his shooting percentage. Carr looks ahead to Lusk. And you heard it again. That's a hold. Grower on the hold. Very scrappy, very, very scrappy player. Now here's a here's a kid who wants to go over to Europe in the summer and uh, student peach. Now that's a heck of a way to spend your summer. That, that's dedication right there. You look at Chris Carr. Kevin Grower, by the way, started his career at the at St. Louis University right here in town. And when his dad left and was replaced by Charlie Spoonhauer, he transferred. And he's winding up his career now at Tulsa. He's a pretty funny kid. You know, one of his favorite TV shows is Steinfeld. <laughs> that, that show's kept me up many nights. They say he's a Seinfeld fanatic. Yeah, not just a, a fan, a fanatic. Yeah, he records all the episodes. And, he, and he's reciting some of the scenes to me this morning. <laughs> Reggie, did you see this one when he was I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I gotta go do some work. <laughs> Seals, the point Dexter. Good pass for that point, Dexter. And Seals splits the defense. Very smooth play. Down the pipe of the defense, right over the top of the slip and slide twist finger roll. I don't even know if George Durbin has that one in his repertoire. This is the guy who I think reminds me of the Iceman, Chris Carr. He's got those long arms, but we've yet to see the finger roll. You're right. Well, this is an opportunity because they're going 1 4 right here, and he has an opportunity to go 1 on 1 or use his passing ability. And that's what they want to do right there. Marcus Timmons. <laughs> Three seconds, and that's it. So far, it's been all Salukis in the first half. Tulsa may already be in the big dance. Southern needs to win to get in. It's 39-34, and we'll go to the studio with Mike Tirico and Dick Vitale. All right, that's five-point lead for Southern Illinois over Tulsa here at the half of the MVC. But if Southern Illinois wins, uh, we think both of these teams are going to get in. Tulsa's power ranking, as Doug and Reggie have said, is very high. So there may be some people who are a little nervous watching this game tonight. Well, I would think guys like Mike Jarvis and Steve Fisher would have to be nervous because if Tulsa were to get beaten, now you've got two teams coming out of this conference, and they deserve to be in. I mean, if Tulsa loses, they beat Western Kentucky, who's 25-3. and three. They beat New Mexico State. Tubby Smith and his gang, they will be in. Win or lose, baby. And they both went to the tournament last year, Southern Illinois and Tulsa. Blew out UCLA. That's Don't right. Don't think they're not thinking about it. Psychologically, the number one team in America. They have Tulsa on their mind. Mm -hmm. Tulsa played well in that game. Welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri, inside the Keel Center. And so far in the first half, it has been all Southern Illinois. You see the score 39-34. Hi, everybody. Doug Bell, right beside Reggie Diaz. And Southern Illinois has been impressive, especially Paul Lusk and Chris Carr. Well, you can't forget the defense of, of Timmons. He's been really good in the back line. Just a great first half of basketball. Now, let's look at some highlights uh, to back that up. Really, if you're a Southern Illinois fan, you got to be pretty happy right now. Well, Paul Lusk doing a great job shooting the jumper from all angles of the floor. Floor, but Carr and the ball movement of the rest of the players has been really tremendous. 
You see Hawkins on the upswing of the ball. Carr is the one that's going to end up with it. But watch this pass and the dunk. And the WWF would really look good at this one. Look at that. Flex <laughs> those muscles and give the chest bump. On and the other oh. hand, Tulsa having a tough time converting on the inside, shooting, you know, 38% for the half. And watch Raphael on the short arm layup, but the frustration, the foul afterwards, not doing a good job on the inside, Tulsa. Looking at the first half numbers now, and you see the field goal percentage yesterday against Bradley. Tulsa was like 63% in the first half. Well, actually, they were 68% from the from the field. You know, uh, IS, I mean SIU about the same points for the uh, for the for the half. And rebounding SIU out rebounding the Golden Hurricane. So we're ready for the start of the second half. Saluki's 39, Golden Hurricane 34. We're going to have to keep an eye on this inside the paint uh, misses that Tulsa had in the first half. I think that was the story for them, not converting on the in the, in the blue under the basket, but have an ample opportunity. Oh, big time slam. You don't think they were in the locker room setting that play up from day one, do you? That's what they were talking about back in the dressing room. Marcus Timmons. his own rebound. Oh, yeah. Seals goes up strong, and Maldonado's right there, laying it in. It was a good finish, but again, they had an, a second chance to score off of Shea Seals' miss. He probably should have took the ball up when he first got it. Would have, would have not had a chance to miss it on the other side. Maldonado with 11 points now. Got a mismatch underneath with Carr and Shea Seals. They got to take a look at it. Brzezinski starts the second half starts with a three-pointer. I told you, if he steps out that far, he can shoot that 16-footer. Maldonado laying it into the foul. Now that's how you finish off a shot. It's six foot 10, six foot 11. When you get in there, you gotta be able to throw it down. You know, Carr made a nice stab at the ball, but on the replay, check it out. Carr goes swinging by, but he has Raphael goes and puts it in. He doesn't want to take a chance of having those misses again. Chris Carr discussing things with Ron Zetcher. Maldonado tries to complete the three-point play. Carr goes way up with those long arms to snatch the rebound. Maldonado with 13 points. That's a career high for him. Well, he has a great ability to move without the ball and be in the right place at the right time to pick up the little chippy. We mentioned the first half. Tulsa 18 now in the RPI ratings. Southern Illinois comes in at 43. That's where both teams stand now. You know, both these teams, the NC2A is going to have to take a good look at them. Look at that block. Nice block by Poindexter. And here comes Seals. Wisely held it up. Poindexter, Maldonado make a nice tandem. And Poo's been a little bit quiet on the offensive end, where last night he was just killing everybody. I think a lot of that has to do with not getting any defensive rebounds so they can get in that running game. Jay Seals and Tubby were both yelling for the call. Oh, tough call. I thought his feet were moving pretty good. Lux stuck, stuck his elbow out to, to push him back. I don't know if there should have been any call. That's his third foul on Juanza Johnson. His third first foul. That's a beautiful name, Kwanzaa. Back out. Chris Carr. Chris Carr only 6'6", but long arms. He plays much bigger than that when he gets inside, inside the paint. Yeah, he's about seven feet yeah. down in there. Seal 
real struggle in this NBC tournament from the outside, and it continues. That was partially blocked by Williamson, and the bomb. Johnson. Oh! Wow, he got hammered hard. Oh, man, that could have been ugly. But is Timmons afraid of anything? Don't go up on him, because you know he's going to go up and try to get it back. And Kwanzaa, a great athlete of his own, Lush just crying over there about a foul. But Kwanzaa on the other end, and Timmons, if you're going to foul a guy, that's what you have to do. Legal foul, legal hard foul, going for the ball, but definitely does not let him convert that basket. No easy buckets here. Kwanzaa Johnson. 14 out of 14 from the free throw line in this tournament. That's a new record in the Missouri Valley Conference. You know, I was talking about Kwanzaa's name. You know, Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday, and he's he was named after that holiday, Kwanzaa. Now 15 out of 15 for the tournament from the strike. Oh, Maybe 16 out of 16. And he'll leave the game with three fouls. And he's replaced by Cordell Love. Well, you know, he brings in a guy that is quite a bit the, the same type of player. Very athletic, good on the rebounds. And if Love gets his feet together, he's one of the best shooters in the country. Also now extending that defense. And it's interesting, Maldonado up at the top. Southern Illinois really does a good job of breaking that press, primarily because they have shooters that can shoot from all parts of the floor. Seven points for Scott Brzezinski off the bench. Brzezinski in the paint, in the corner, at the top of the key. He's got a nice touch. The unsung hero so far for the salute is Scott Brzezinski. Yeah, show it to him. Give him a little head fake and put it on the ground at six foot eleven. And then go up and make sure you put it in the hole. Fifteen points. Maldonado going to uncharted waters with fifteen points. Love hammered it down. Love, here's a guy that says he wants to do more than anything in the world is dunk on Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I walked up to him before the game and said, Michael would catch all that. He says, uh-uh, not about quick jumping. Just like that. Maldonado gets that big paw in there, knocks it away. Here comes Tulsa. A chance to tie or perhaps take the lead with a bomb. Won't go. Simmons went way up, and he's fouled. Who Williamson not playing the same type of basketball game that he did yesterday, and most of that is because this isn't as open. It's not a wide open, you know, healthy skeleton type of game like it was last night. He's got to get inside the paint so he can do his thing. So Tulsa has climbed back into it, down by only two. We'll return in a moment. Southern Illinois on top of Tulsa by just two. Golden Hurricane are doing a nice job inside. Well, in the first half, they had some trouble scoring in the paint. But in the second half, they've really stepped it up, getting those putbacks and getting them down in the hole. Now, we're talking about second chance points. Southern Illinois, six opportunities, two putbacks. Because of the second half, Tulsa, five opportunities, five putbacks. Ian Stewart back in the game. He has the basketball. Coming off to Shane Hawkins, who's also back with the Salukis. And Ian wastes a little time jacking it up. Tim is there with the offensive four. J.R. Rollo with the rebound. SIU led by five at halftime. Also with a chance to tie or take the lead. Three on the shot clock. Had to shoot it. Rallo. And Gulf's his man to pick up the foul. Good look at Tubby Smith. 
His son will join him next year. He's a high school star in Tulsa. And he's a point guard. You know, Clue Williamson graduates. So maybe Cubby's son will take things over. A lot of pressure for a young man, but that's next year. Tulsa comes back into that full court press again. Southern Illinois handles it with ease. Oh, just as I said that, huh? Careless. Horatio Tucker really working hard on defense. Follow the miss. I'm telling you what, when Ian Stewart and Rollo and Craig Hernady get in there, it is like the <laughs> WWF, isn't it? Uh, yeah. There's bodies banging everywhere. Oh, yeah. fouls now on Ian who continues to be plagued by fouls yesterday he missed most of the game with foul trouble Brzezinski though has done a nice job filling the gap well Brzezinski has been able to give him the same type of ability underneath the basket but has stepped out and hit the long jumper too they we're working on that this morning the high low dump down on the back door but again Stewart with nice hands in the paint deflected the ball out of bounds. Heads up play by Stewart. Tucker's doing a nice job on Williams. And a whistle inside. They call Hawkins for the hold on Rollo. Hawkins. Hawkins just giving a little bit too much. See the elbow underneath his arm? <laughs> Look at that. He's got no chance to get around that arm. That's like that's like trying to move a telephone pole. I don't think Rollo even knew he was there. <laughs> T-Rex, what is this? Something on my arm. Can you get it off? <laughs> New 35 for Tulsa. A lot of switching going on. Tulsa worked on this. Got shoot around. And it's a very nice play. They want them to switch because as soon as they recognize where the mismatch is, that's where they went. That's why they went, been able to dump it right down the row under the basket. SIU hasn't scored in about four minutes. And we're all tied up in St. Louis. All up. Get them off the schneid. Just so smooth. Just shows her native the ball. Let the fly go by and just can the little two-pointer. Very easy. Brzezinski, another rebound off the bench. Brzezinski. We got a nice job. Here. Ross felt it. That time Brzezinski gets called over the back. Well, Lust, well, Lust is out there telling right now, telling Carr that he missed him. He didn't recognize until after the shot that Carr had uh, Love gardening. Right here on the shot, on the elevation, he could have dumped it down to Carr right up under the basket because he had Tucker, I mean, he had Love gardening down there. And Poindexter now back in for the Golden Hurricane. You see the score? Horatio Tucker has really been all over him. Now Chris Carr switches and goes up the bottom. Rollo off the bench. And you know what makes that tough is, is when he caught the ball, he didn't hesitate. He didn't bring it down to where the little guys could bother him. He kept it above his head and put the put back in. The SIU faithful on their feet now. It's the Carbondale way. They're all standing up. Timmons will hand it in, and he gets fouled by Poindexter. Oh, real nice. He's faced him up. When you have a guy six foot ten guarding you, and you're about six foot eight, you face him up and look at him. Watch him. Watch him take him on the rocker step and to the left hand over the top. Just a smart, smart play. He knows he has the advantage going to the hole, and look at him shielding him off with the body and over the lip of the rim. This guy really plays with a lot of savvy. Oh, 
Chris Carr tried to keep it alive, but knocked it out of bounds. Timmons is going to be one of those guys that if, when he goes, if he gets a chance to go to the next level, he'll probably be a better player because he'll be able to have a little bit different uh, job. We'll be back. It's hoop hysteria in St. Louis where SIU leads Tulsa 51-48. Coming up later tonight on ESPN, it's Portland against Gonzaga, the WCC championship as championship week continues on ESPN. Well, we were talking about Timmons, and the one thing that's great about him is he's an inside threat. He's a defensive threat, but look at the rocker step and the move to the basket. He's one of those players that when he goes to the next level, maybe to the NBA, he'll be a player that will be able to show what he can do. Right now, he does all the dirty work. He does what it takes for this team to win. Who Williamson with the ball, gives off to Johnson. Lots of time. SIU by three, and Brzezinski in there battling, but Rollo has done a nice job himself off the bench. Poindexter. Look at the offensive rebounds now. Tulsa, with one better. Tulsa, 10 offensive rebounds. Southern Illinois, only nine, but second chance points. Tulsa, 15. Southern Illinois, only four. Now, those in the NBA, that's called hustle points. Those are the intangible. Those are the points that you get when you get a loose ball, when you get an offensive rebound. Those are a separate stat that never really is seen by any of the newspapers. Chris Carr has yet to score this half. Timmons. Well, it's a basketball. Rich Heron didn't believe it. The Hall of Fame coach is beside himself. A nice look to the basket, showing his athleticism. But on the rebound, I thought he might have got fouled. But Rich Heron thought he got hammered. And why the referee didn't call that call is because the defensive player was standing with his hands straight up. He didn't come down on the ball or move his body. Therefore, he's allowed to stand there. If the offensive man brings the contact, so be it. Rallo looking inside. Rich Heron, by the way, in the... Illinois High School Hall of Fame. Spent 25 years at Benton High School, over 600 victories. He's a legend when you talk high school hoops in that state. Shot clock winds down. Johnson has to fire, and he misfires badly. Well, there's been some really ugly jump shots in this game for Tulsa. Just not shooting the ball well at all tonight. Timmons doing the right thing, turning, holding the man off, and Chris Carr definitely on the nice put down to his big man. Chris Carr, just a tremendous basketball player, has the opportunity to shoot the ball, but look at his teammate. Give it up, unselfish basketball. That's why they're leading this basketball game. Timmons now with a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds. And he's done it really in a quiet sort of way. Well, that's what he does. That's why the coach thinks that he's the best athlete that he's had in the last 10 years because of those subtle things that he can do on the court. Nothing fancy, but just solid defense, as you know, defensive player of the year. And right now, working with a double-double. And we got 10 minutes to go in this game. There you saw Rich Heron. He really resurrected this SIU basketball program. It was down and out until he took it over 10 years ago. And Brzezinski elected to shoot a jumper with Chris Carr wide open in the corner. Johnson, boy, he got peppered, and he'll shoot too. You know, you, you'd like to see a guy not give up a layup, but Carr right there could have probably stopped him from going by him. What you want to do, what he has to do, he has to close out a little bit sturdier. You know, right there, he closed out too close to the offensive man, consequently allowing him to go to the middle. If you're going to force him one way, force him to the baseline. Give your other teammates a chance to follow up with defense. He goes to the middle, you got no other opportunity but to follow. Hey, his first miss. 
He was eight for eight tonight before that miss. 15 out of 15 for the tournament until the, until he hit the back iron. Ian Stewart now back in. Ian got a haircut today. He said before the game he was trying everything to break the slump. So he went out and got a haircut before the game. And he misses both. After a serious streak, comes up short on both. Barr is tied up in no man's land, but finds an open Horatio Tucker and ready to go. 20 seconds down the shot clock. Marcus Timmons looking for Carr. Maldonado yanks it down. Here comes Seal. And Horatio Tucker ran right up his back. You know, it's a tough play for Seals. When, you, when you're an offensive player like him, with the ability that he has, he sort of gave up on that fast break. He knew the contact was going to come. At that point, when you get two steps from the basket, pick the ball up, ride the defense to the bucket, you know the contact's going to come. And when you hear that whistle, get it up on the glass. Cordell Loves checks back in for Tulsa. J.R. Rallo takes a seat. Seals goes to the line. A young man who's had some sinus problems here the last few weeks. And also an abscess tooth. <laughs> he's hurting. Yeah, he's evicted. That, that's painful. Well, they were talking about him going to, to drain his tooth today. And uh, Tubby Smith says, oh, no, I don't think so. Not today, you won't. Maybe tomorrow, not today. He's having some problems with his shooting right now with his free throws, too. And he picks up the foul. Tough situation. He's only shooting 39% for the, for the season from outside. But we all know that he is a player. And he's going to come back strong because he's struggling right now. There's Tubby in his fourth season at Tulsa. Last year, he was the first Tulsa coach to take his team to the Sweet 16 after a terrific run in which he knocked off UCLA, Oklahoma State. Then he ran into Arkansas. Kind of a tough tournament track, would you say? I'll tell you Made what. the most of it. Chris Carr. And Maldonado, another rebound. He's had a huge game. I'm telling you, this guy's got a nose for the basketball. He is always around that ball. Also looking for their first hoop. First point of any kind in about four minutes. You know, they're not playing real well, but they're still in this basketball game. They're only down by, you know, five or six points. If you just joined us as the shot clock winds down to single digits. Two teams played during the regular season. One point wins for each team on last second shots on their home floor. Just not a good shot by Poo Williamson. Driving into the lane, not having much no place to go. Tucker doing a great job on him. He sort of puts it up, but they're wasting time on the offensive shot clock. Ian Stewart. It's like a point guard out there setting things up. And on the shot clock. And the hold inside on Seals. He was wrapped up with Timmons. See, a lot of times players don't understand that, you know, as you look at Rich Heron, who, who uh, is really you know, working the referee strong right now, you have to, as a smaller player, when you're being posted up by a bigger player, you have to make contact, release, and try to get around that offensive player. 53-48 SIU over Tulsa. Mike, thank you. Southern Illinois on top of Tulsa, 53-48. Doug Bell alongside Reggie Theus. One of the great shooters of all time. <laughs> You're kind. You were, you still are. I saw it today. I tell you what. I'm With a tie and slick shoes on. I'm still the man over at the Spectrum in the YMCA now. <laughs> they don't have a game going without calling me. <laughs> we got a game right here. And with the history of these two teams and the close, exciting finishes, we could be headed again to last-second heroics. Tulsa in a matchup zone defense, and that's to stop some of the good shooting that's going on by SIU. 
Maldonado and they have down another rebound. And they really have to do something to really get control of this basketball game. If I'm Tulsa, I might even go into a, a trapping half-court defense. Defense has really started to dominate now in the second half as we get down to single digits on the shot clock. And that's blocked by Timmons. That's block number three by the defensive player of the year, Timmons. Really causing havoc down there for Tulsa. You know, with Shea Seal shooting for the game right now, two for 12, and Poo is their other offensive guy, you know, they're really not getting anything out of their, their big offensive guns. They're going to have to find somebody else to take over. Marcus Timmons has been the quiet leader for the Southern Illinois team. And Boo Williamson comes up with a steal. That was just quickness personified right there. have to have somebody else love is a very good shooter when he's got his feet together and they need someone else right now to step up and hit a few shots all up Boo Williamson trying to extend the defense yeah. and that hustle by Poo Williamson caused him to get into a quicker and early shot offensively see ya. a Tulsa sandwich. Chris Carr was right in the middle. Well, actually, I think that uh, Rafael Maldonado really caused that contact and caused Kwanzaa to, to foul Chris Carr. Kwanzaa has four fouls. Kwanzaa was already up in the air, probably on Carr's back. Tubby, Tubby Smith looking on. He's not real happy what's going on right now. He's got to do something. Get somebody in there. Yeah, there you go. Who do I have down at the end of the bench? <laughs> Let's go. Somebody, somebody come up here who wants to play. He's going to send in point us to give him a little more beef. But I was, what I was talking about is that Raphael came over and probably made Kwanzaa foul Chris Carr by pushing his own man in the back. Poindexter checks in for Tulsa. Chris Carr scores the first point of the second half for him. Chris plays with that mouthpiece. And he gives the Salukis a 55-51 advantage. look travels and I tell you what that's a good call by the referee because Raphael shuffled his feet on the catch as you look at look at a nice pass but look at that you did a quick two little quick rabbit steps Raphael not happy with that last night he got hit in the nose it kind of looked like that when it happened <laughs> Car from the outside, and Horatio Tucker gets it right back. Under five minutes now. Saluki's by four. Ian Stewart continues to throw up nothing that goes in. No, continues to throw up bricks. You said it, I didn't. <laughs> I'll blame the haircut. <laughs> Love. A little dipsy doing the air. Looked like Reggie Theus on that one. Wouldn't go in. And here comes SIU. He used to do that. Hang in the air and do all that stuff. Uh, not really. I couldn't really jump that high. <laughs> on the game clock and 12 seconds on the shot clock 
good dish to Ian Stewart from Paul Lutz. Look at the two difference in the game. Ian, Ian Smith finally gets on the board with what a pass from Lutz on the penetration. That's what's been really important in that play. Williamson won't go. There's Tucker with a rebound. I like the way SIU is using their patience, and in their patience of their offense, they're not taking long jump shots. They're trying to get in the seams of the zone. Right there, another pass in the seam of the zone. Really important not to get caught into a, a flying jump shot game right here. Get the ball inside like you've been doing. Poindexter called for the foul on Timmons, who comes up a bit lame after that. He's trying to work it out. Well, he hurt his leg on the previous play at the other end of the floor. He's just trying to gut it out right now. He's a tough kid. Hernady is 41, and Kwanzaa Johnson back in with four fouls for Tulsa. They're checking Marcus over the sidelines. A young man who, over the last eight years, 222 victories. When you include what he did at his high school in Haywood uh, City, Missouri, he, was, he only lost like three games in four years. They won four straight state titles. Something like 122 games in the last four or five years of his career. Yeah. He's been a good player, but now he must leave. And they'll bring in Shane Hawkins to shoot the free ones. 71% shooter, so really a pretty good guy to bring in under the circumstances. You know, in, in, you're talking about Timmons. In his four years at S SIU, they've won 90 games. That's a pretty amazing stat. Brzezinski will replace Ian Stewart. No, he will replace uh, Hawkins, who will shoot the free one. They want the bulk in there, but they want Hawkins at the line shooting him. Well, I guess I, I guess I would too. He's on. Yeah. Well, you know, he's a 70 percent free throw shooter. You heard it. Nothing but the net there. Down by seven. Winding down to three minutes. Also with a quick lineup in there. And Love gets called for the illegal screen. Four fouls on Love. Love really not given a solid place defensively on that pick. You have to give the offensive player room to run. Love ran too close to Tucker and nailed him with a hard pick. Timmons getting ready to re-enter the game. Tell you that a, a little bit of a difference in the play here. In the pros, if you are not able to shoot your free throws, you are out of the game completely. In college basketball, on a dead ball, you can get somebody else in there to shoot the free throws for you, and you can enter the basketball game again. You saw Temple leading Rutgers there in the waning seconds of the A-10 tournament. Big free one. Maldonado comes back in. Rollo. Replacing Hernady and Love. 3.05 on the clock. The Salukis of Southern Illinois, 59, and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, 51. SIU has won this tournament the last two years running. Nobody ever has won the NBC tournament three years in a row. So they're something uh, also in the in the last five years the number one seed has only won this tournament one time and Tulsa is the number one seed on that note we'll take a break catch our breaths and come back for the stretch run between Southern Illinois and Tulsa Southern Illinois on 
top of Tulsa, 60-51 in St. Louis, Missouri. As we look at the Nike storyline, SIU led by Lush with 13 points, Carr with 18, but only two in the second half. And second chance points big for Tulsa, although they trail. What are they going to have to do to get back into it, Reggie? Well, I think they're going to have to do what they're doing now, try to get some motion into their offense, try to get some of the big guys some shots underneath. But most of all, this guy right here, Shields, Seals has to get in this ball game and hit some shots for Tulsa to get back in. Kwanzaa Johnson, as he goes down on the floor, connects on the three. And they blow the whistle because Brzezinski and Johnson were all tangled up. 14 points now for Johnson. Well, if, I, if, if I'm Tulsa, I have to go into a definite full-court press. But watch this replay here. Kwanzaa on the jump just catches a little bit of somebody's momentum and just floors them. A lot of slick stuff on the floor. They have to wipe it up. But definitely, Tulsa has to get into this full-court press to create some turnovers so they can get a few more possessions. If I'm SIU, I have to be patient on offense, use the clock because it's on your side, and not take any bad shots. Right now, possessions for them is most important. Plus pulls it out. See, I like the way they don't want to force anything. They pulled it out. They don't want to hurry their offense. They got over 18 seconds to go on the clock. Plenty of time to get a good shot. But right now, they got a mismatch down low. Chris Carr really working Take a look hard at Chris against Carr. Seals. Chris Carr working shields, seals down low. Five in the shot. Five oh. Out of nowhere. Hey, that's a three. That's a huge shot for Brzezinski. And his teammates on the sidelines, they're shocking their faces or what? <laughs> That's a big shot. Seals throws it up. Maldonado. Keep a battling, and the big guy will shoot two. I tell you what, Rafael Maldonado is definitely a workhorse. He's still putting in some hard time on the court tonight because he's not shooting a great percentage for shots around the basket, but every time he puts one up, he gets it back with defense around him, too. Timmons out of the game right now. He's got a pulled groin. And that's a tough, tough situation because he hurt that groin. He hurt that groin last night. No, he is in the game, but he's working on a pulled groin. Tough situation for him because those don't go away. I know I had a pulled groin when I played the pros, and it took me two years to get rid of it. Jerry West, was that was one of the reasons Jerry West retired from basketball. Raphael right now, 15 points. It's career high, and what a day to have your career high. Tulsa continues to struggle from the free throw line tonight. Brower ready to check in. You know, yesterday against Bradley in the semifinals, they were 27 of 29 from the strike. We'll check their numbers after this one. Well, that's using that line, isn't it? That time he connects, they're now 13 out of 21. Brower back in now for Tulsa. Tulsa trying to get a few more possessions by going into this full court press. But right here in the back line by me, you have to be careful because they're going to send a man long. Simmons has finally had a fine game, and Brzezinski off the bench has been key for Southern. And a block on Brower. Brzezinski's been huge off the bench. He really has. I mean, not only battling underneath the basket for every loose ball, but stepping out in the corner, hitting a jump shot, hitting a big shot up at the top of the key. And those are the guys, so you don't ex expect points out of the big guys like that from those places on the floor. So anytime one of your big guys step out and hit shots, it's a huge plus for SIU. 10 points, 10 rebounds for Timmons, working on that tender leg. Shane Hawkins back in now for Brzezinski. And Maldonado checks back in for the Golden Hurricane, replacing Grower. They're standing up on the bench. But now the, the coach is coming yeah. down. <laughs> They're getting too close to the floor. Well, you'd be surprised that what you can see with your peripheral vision, 
You're in it when it's your own teammates. I've had many times a guy standing up cheering me on, making me miss shots. You do that? People do that to me on the golf course. <laughs> they move and I always miss a putt. I know. Even when the grass blows, you miss your <laughs> yeah. putt. Timmons went way up to steal the rebound from Maldonado. And Carl get whistled for the foul. He tripped. That's good hustle. Love. You know, that's good hustle. Love just really tripped in the in the contact. Watch on the pass from Hawkins. Nice defense, but Love really trips over the foot of Chris Carr. I don't know why the referee would call a foul on that. Obviously, he didn't see what we saw. Good look at the player of the year, the Missouri Valley Conference, 127 in the clock. Saluki's up 64-55. Grower now back in. Pooh Williamson has really been neutralized today. Let's credit Horatio Tucker. You know, you were talking just right now just about Chris Carr being the player of the year. But, you know, he's a great guy, you know, because one of the things that it is he, he's very, he has great admiration for Timmons. And he says he just wants people to put him in the same class with Timmons. Now, that's, that's a heck of a comment coming from really your best athlete on the team, talking about a player who doesn't get as much pub as he does. Carr returns for one more year at SIU. Timmons is a senior. And Timmons calls the timeout. Rich Heron wants to discuss things. It's a smart play by Heron because he's got his best ball handlers in the game right now for this press. There you see the time and the score from St. Louis. All right, Mike, thank you. Welcome back, everybody, to St. Louis. You see the manners of the St. Louis Blues high above the rafters. And Tulsa, yeah, they're screaming right now because they trail 64-57 to that man and his SIU Saluki. Tulsa's just having a horrendous shoot night, 38% from the field, and their best player, Shea Seals, is only two for 14. thought about it long. One of the reasons why SIU handles this press so well is they have five players on the floor that can handle the ball. You've got Tucker, Hawkins, Lusk, all guards, and then, of course, Timmons and Carr, both very good ball handlers themselves. Chris Carr goes to the line now for a chance to Tack on a few more as his team looks to nail down an automatic bid to the big show. It's another good move by, by, Rick, by Rich Heron because these are the best free throw shooters with a minute and 26 left in the game with the score, you know, the way that it is. Tulsa's going to have to start putting them on the line, and he wants his best free throw shooters in the game. The big boys have done their job. Now you leave it up to the little guys. 26 on the clock. Oh, don't you just love that string? Whoosh. Tubby's team down by nine. Boo tries to bring him back. Brower. They must foul. So you got to get rid of the ball right now because you don't want them to foul you. See, when you're a scorer, a lot of times, you know, okay, it's, it, you're up by, you know, seven or eight points and you can pad your average right now, but the best thing to do at this situation is to give up the ball so... Here's what's coming up, Reggie, on Sports Center, Blazers, Bulls, baseball news. Coach K held a press conference today in Durham to let everybody know that his back is feeling better. A whole bunch of stuff coming up on SportsCenter. That's next. With the clock, with a minute and three seconds left in the game, you don't want to stop the clock. You want Chris Carr has got to give that ball up. Although he's a fairly good free throw shooter and he can get a few extra points right now, you know, okay. But give the ball up because the clock is your friend. You want to use it. You don't want it to stop. You saw both coaches there. Chris Carr, a fine night. And he has the nice touch. 
Nice back, back spin rotation on that ball. I almost said he got the roll, but you told me shooters don't get rolls. They have touch. <laughs> Seals with the lay-in. Sam learning stuff from yeah, Reggie you're Theus. Learning, Doug. Doug Bell along with one of the great shooters, Reggie Theus. And we'll take a break. Tulsa talking it over, hoping to rally in the final 56. Ed Hightower looking on. And there's the best man at Reggie's <laughs> wedding right there. He came to watch the game tonight. Let me see. It, the important thing is, you see how much writing they got on that head? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't only use his head, they used the back of his neck, his ears. You know that look like, look like Bam Bam Bigelow, the guy who's going to fight LT, <laughs> no. Lawrence Taylor in that wrestling deal. i tell you who he looks like. You're going to crack up. He looks like Vavoom. Remember the cartoon <laughs> character? <laughs> Been watching cartoons again, huh? Oh, yeah. Shane Hawkins. Gets knocked out of bounds by Grower, the defensive back for Tulsa. Looked like one that time. <laughs> they they kind of laugh it off. And Shane Hawkins from Pinckneyville, Illinois. Young man who led Pinckneyville to the state title a year ago will go to the free throw line, and Tubby Smith knows. I think he can rest assured his team is going to the tournament. Even if they lose this game, they are very talented. 18 in the computer rating. And remember what they did last year. They ran it all the way to the Sweet 16 before they ran into the eventual national champions. Southern Illinois looking to return to the NCAA tournament for the third year in a row. 56 seconds. They're up by 10 points. Seals, listen for the foul. Chris Carr will go to the line. Chris Carr has just been named the most valuable player, the MVP in the MVC tournament. His teammate Paul Lusk, Marcus Timmons on the all-tournament team, along with Pooh Williamson, and Anthony Parker, a talented player from Bradley University, located in Peoria, Illinois. It's been a great ball game. It's really come down to rush it up for Tulsa and shoot three-pointers, trying to save something. And then back, back on the other end, you got to foul to try to try to maybe they'll make one and miss one, and you can come back and try to make the game a little more respectable. But this one really is over, and that man right there has coached one heck of a game along with Tubby Smith. You know, Tubby. It's a great, great basketball coach. He was one of the hottest commodities last year after the, the tournament. You know, he interviewed oh, yeah. at Kansas State and Oklahoma, but you know, he returned to Tulsa, you know, with a big, fat, new contract. And they said that, ah, you know, I weighed my options, and, and this is where I really want to be, <laughs> as he goes to the bank. <laughs> so the Missouri Valley Conference, Two teams in the NCAA tournament. I feel pretty confident in saying that. Sports Center is coming up next. Five fouls now for Johnson. He'll leave the game. Paul Lusk has that fist working. 39 seconds to go. Sports Center coming up with all sorts of stuff to talk about. Southern Illinois has played like this has been a home game for them. It's been very exciting. I, at least three-fourths of the crowd here tonight is SIU fans, and they're starting to sing. And Dwayne Bonner checks in for Tulsa. And I've been saving this. Dwayne... His craziest <laughs> ambition, he wants to bungee jump off the Empire State Building. I've been dying to use that. <laughs> I, 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 the only thing I want to know is why, because <laughs> it, either you're trying to say that he's a very excitable young man, or he's just really stupid or something. You know? Here's an interesting situation. You know, if I'm, if, if I'm Southern Illinois, I get, I get Chris Timmons, Marcus Timmons, out of the basketball game right now. I don't want to take a chance with him hurting himself anymore. Wow, throws it in from about 35 feet. And a quick whistle. 
There's no reason for Timmons to be in the game right now. Even though he's, he's bouncing around like he's all right, he's still hurt. He could end up doing something to hurt that leg more, and that it would not be good for SIU. But I tell you what, when you're winning and things are going well for you, it hurts a little bit less. Paul Lusk. Comes up short there. Paul Lusk went to Rich Heron's basketball camp. He's just a, just a kid. And uh, there was a lot of kids in Illinois who went to Rich Heron's basketball <laughs> camp. Did they start recruiting that young? <laughs> I don't think Rich knew he was going to be the SIU head coach. Dan and Love goes, man, that's from beyond Reggie Theus rank. Love shooting a long jumper. You know, something else that you might know, you might not know, but, but Bonner and Love went to the same high school. South Oak Cliff High School in Dallas, Texas. And Marcus lays it in there. I wonder if Bonner can talk Love into bungee jumping. What do you think? Saluki's 75-62. Tucker makes it 77-62, and they flood the court <laughs> with 2.1, and Ed Hightower takes over, and that's a technical. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Reset, reset. Look at Rich Aaron go, what are you doing? <laughs> so they call a technical on the crowd, and the floodgates are going to open. two ticks go off the clock. I don't know if they're going to get that ball back because Chris Carr, after that slam dunk by Tucker, threw it up into the stands. And if I'm a real Suzuki fan, I don't give that ball back. <laughs> oh, there it comes. Just what? like at Wrigley Field when they throw the baseball back after a home run, they toss the uh, basketball back. I've been a Tulsa fan. Uh, I don't give that ball back. Who shoots the technical in Southern Illinois? And just An unprecedented like, third straight title. Nobody's ever done it in Missouri Valley Conference history. We're talking a great tradition in this conference. And that really typifies the type of game that Tulsa has had tonight. Who shoot it, shot 64% for the game last night, 27 points. Really not finishing this game off well and the whole team really shooting about 38 percent for the game and that does it southern illinois the missouri valley conference tournament champions with a 77 62 win over the golden hurricane